You know, one guy that's been kicking around in the automotive industry for a long time is Gail Banks. You've seen his commercials, and you've seen me install his products here on the show with some pretty amazing results. But just who is this guy? You know, what's his credentials? Does he really know what he's doing, or is he just mixing up some snake oil? Well, we're going to find out, because we're not only going to take you inside Gail Banks Engineering, see what's going on, but we're also going to show you how they continue to push the envelope for the whole automotive industry. Tucked in back of the massive facility is a state-of-the-art race shop where all kinds of research and development goes on to squeeze more power out of both gasoline and diesel engines. Now this is a highly secretive thing that Gail's working on. So secretive, it can't show it to anybody. We'd have to kill you. But Gail's not around here, so... Oh, man! Check this out! This wicked little truck is being built to go road racing. Not wild enough, huh? Well, it's going to be running a high RPM, 700 horsepower Duramax diesel engine and run against Porsches and Ferraris. Yeah, now, that's wild. This Dodge Dakota just happens to be the world's fastest street legal truck, running over 220 miles an hour at Bonneville after towing its own trailer to get there. This World War II tank engine? Well, it's being fitted with twin turbos to go on Jay Leno's massive roadster that just happens to have one of those huge engines stuffed somewhat under the hood. But what is all this high-performance stuff really for? Simple. It provides research to develop products that you can use on your rig, and that's where the engineering part comes in. Electrical parts and components are designed and developed in-house so the electrical systems will be compatible with the rest of the engine and produce the desired power increases. Intercoolers are developed and tested for flow and efficiency using state-of-the-art equipment. Engine parts like intakes or air boxes are first sketched out, modeled in the computer, and then the piece is fabricated so it can be tested. Now this is what a finished piece would look like. Now it's an exact replica made out of ABS plastic and you can literally bolt this on an engine or a flow bench and see how it's going to perform. Now if it passes the test, the piece will then be replicated in metal or carbon fiber or whatever Banks decides to use. If it doesn't pass the test, it's not good enough, it goes back to the guys in the design room and they tweak on it until it's exactly how they want it. Cool. Then the parts are dynoed and tested and basically put through the ringer to see what kind of improvement there is. And if it's acceptable, the part goes into production so you can buy it. But that's not the only benefit. No. By putting so much emphasis on design and engineering to get legitimate power, as opposed to quick, easy fixes to make a buck, Banks has influenced this whole industry and in what is expected from aftermarket parts. That is something we all benefit from. 